Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. In today's video, we are going to walk through the process of installing Microsoft Exchange hotfixes. This video focuses on the installation of the Microsoft Exchange Server 2016 May 2025 hotfix, but the steps that I show you will also apply to installing security updates, that is the SU updates. So let's dive in. In my setup, all Exchange mailboxes reside in Exchange Online, and the on-prem Exchange servers are mainly used for managing Exchange objects like distribution list and supporting SMTP relay. Before starting the Exchange update, we should check for any pending Windows updates, get them installed, and reboot the server. I have already done that in my environment if you haven't done it yet, I recommend pausing here, installing any pending updates, reboot the server, and then continue with this tutorial. We'll begin by running a script called setup assist. which is provided by Microsoft to help prepare Exchange environments for updates. That is CU, SU, uh, HU updates. The script is maintained and regularly updated by Microsoft. When you launch it, it first checks for any latest available version and prompts you to download it if available. I'll also mention the official link to the setup assist script in my description below. After it fetches all the latest updates, rerun the setup assist script. It will perform a number of environment checks to ensure the readiness for patching. Here you can see a summary of what it typically verifies. Using the setup as a script helps avoid fail updates by detecting issues early, minimize downtime by validating prerequisites, and it provides a diagnostic insight for troubleshooting. It also supports hybrid environments where Exchange and AD are tightly integrated. As we can see in my case, the setup assist shows a pending reboot. So I'll go ahead and reboot the server now. Once the server is back online, let's launch the Exchange Management Shell and let's re-execute the Setup Assist script to confirm that all checks pass. In my environment, everything passes except for one warning, which is related to execution policy, and this can be safely ignored. If you'd like to check what's the current execution policy in your environment, you can run the get-execution-policy script in the Exchange Management shell. Next, let's find out what version of Exchange we currently are running to determine the appropriate update package. In my environment, I have four Exchange servers. I patch them one at a time, leaving a few days between each of them. This staggered approach allows me to monitor each patch server for any issues that may arise, identify any regression or changes introduced by the patch, be better prepared to address them on subsequent servers, and reduce any potential downtime and avoid unnecessary pressure or hassle 
on me and my fellow teammates. To determine your current version, extract the file a build version from the Exchange server and compare it with the latest build available on the official Microsoft Exchange update page. As we see, I'm on an older build, so I'll go ahead and download the necessary hotfix for my Exchange server. Before we begin the installation, let's back up the following important components. That is the web config file, the exchange transport rule, the IIS application pool, and the IIS site configuration. I have automated this in my environment with the PowerShell script. You can do it manually or comment below if you would like a copy of my script. Once verified, I also copy the backups to my local machine in case the exchange server becomes inaccessible. As a precaution, I will rerun the setup assist once more to confirm there are no last minute issues. This isn't necessary, but it adds an extra layer of assurance. Now for the main event, installing the Exchange hotfix. Open command prompt as administrator, navigate to the folder where the patch file is located and execute the installer. It is important that you ensure that all Exchange related application like the Exchange management shell are closed before starting the installation. In my video, I will demonstrate what happens if you leave any of the Exchange application open during installation. As expected, the installer throws a warning stating that an exchange process is running. So let's close it and retry the installation.
This time, the installation proceeds and completes successfully. Once the installation is done, a reboot is required for the changes to take effect. Let's go ahead and restart the server now. After reboot, let's proceed to check the exchange build version to ensure that the updates were successfully applied. This confirms that the exchange server we just patched is now updated to the latest available build. And let's rerun setup assist one final time to confirm that there are no outstanding issues. Everything looks good on my end. Now, if you've made any custom changes to the web config file, such as filtering OU visibility or other UI modifications, you'll need to manually reapply them, as installing Exchange updates typically overrides this file. In my environment, we have a large number of OUs and sub-OUs, so I need to re-add those entries to ensure that my team can easily navigate to the needed structure. Once updated, either recycle the Exchange IIS application pool, or if you're still within your change window, you can simply reboot the Exchange server, which is also what I will be performing here. That's it. Your Exchange server is now successfully patched and validated. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe for more Exchange and System Admin tutorials. If you have any question or want any of the scripts I used, please drop a comment below and I'll get back to you. Thank you for watching and have a great day.